Today, down in the comments, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to program our own film festival in a, in a certain way. Now, I'm going to tell you some short films I like, uh, and then down in the comments, uh, I want you to tell me your favorite horror short films. Bonus points if there is a link to free and legally uh, watch them while, it, while supporting the filmmakers. Might get caught in the comment moderation, but I'll, I'll push them through. Yeah, let's, let's, let's watch some movies together. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. I am the author of many splendid books, all available in paperback and ebook and audiobook in many cases that you can go read and check out right now. And I'm also the author of the new upcoming Clown in the Cornfield from Harper Teen that you can and should pre-order using the links below. It would help me out so much. It's going to be great. You should go get it. And this is Project Black T-shirt, the channel where we take uh, a horror film or horror films and then pair them with a piece of horror fiction you will like if you like those movies. Today we're not talking about one movie, we're not talking about two movies, we're talking about five short movies. Five short films that are all, uh, as of making this uh, video, are all available to watch online. Four out of the five of them are free to watch. Uh, one is on Shudder, but a lot of you have Shudder. Before we get started, I do want to say that the first movie on our list is called Asking for a Friend, and it is written and directed by Kelsey Bolig, produced by Edelweiss Productions, and they have sponsored this video. This is a, I had never really done this before, but this is a sponsored video. They asked if I would talk about uh, their new film. Uh, I said, I do not feel comfortable um, endorsing something I haven't seen yet, so could you send me a link to watch it, uh, and then we can talk. Uh, I very much like the movie, as I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, I told them, look, great movie. I'd love to talk about it. I don't really do like reaction videos and stuff like that, which is what they're looking to do. Uh, but I will 100% uh, talk about this film as long as I can. I'll put it in some kind of list and I'll choose the other movies. They, they sponsored this portion of the video, uh, but they did not uh, choose the other films that I'm going to talk about. They did not suggest the other films that I'm going to talk about. Those are all for me. But asking for a friend, this is a real good. This is a real good one. Uh, it is a, a somewhat longer short film. These are all everything on this list. I wanted to vary it. I wanted to have different lengths, different genres, themes, and types of horror. Uh, some of them are barely horror. They're like horror comedy, or some of them are, are very artsy. I didn't want to just do, you know, eight eight movies about shaky cam monsters in the woods. Uh, I wanted to talk about varying types of voices and filmmakers. And this is one of the longer ones. Uh, Asking for a Friend is about these two uh, young professionals living and partying in LA. The, the one roommate comes home, uh, finds a party going on in the apartment downstairs, checks in with her roommate and kind of best friend, and wants to like be like, oh, you want to go check out the party? And she walks in on like, something is happening. We don't know, we don't know what the, the, the situation is around it, uh, but the roommate is not alone. They have a dead body with them and they need help. They need help getting rid of this body, covering up what has happened. It's a movie about kind of female friendships and the length best friends will kind of go for each other. And th there's no real discussion about why is there a dead body in the kitchen? Why is there a dead body in the living room? Um, especially when there's this party going on downstairs, they just have to get rid of it. So it's kind of a, it's, 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 it's kind of a comedy of errors, but it's very much a horror film because the whole film is built around they have to get rid of this dead body and you don't really know what they're going to do to it or how they're going to do that. But it's built around this one really standout, gross, gore sequence. This is a movie that played festivals. This is a movie where we know how this, this kind of the idea of building hype at festivals works, especially if you're a type of film that's going for a gross out or going for a gag. This is a movie where that worked and supposedly from what I can see online, um, they had walkouts, they had people passing out, they had people throwing up. Normally I'm pretty, look at, look at this. Uh, I'm pretty inured to that stuff. I did think the kind of centerpiece of gore gag of this film was really great and really gross and the sound design sells it and the, the gore sells it. That's a, that's a cool facet of this movie, but the rest of sur what's surrounding it, the, the one friend who's helping cover up this possible murder um, does have to go downstairs and go to this party and like ends up getting dosed with drugs. It's a very like, I'm a sucker for well done party sequences. I don't know why. I just like them in movies. Really great. I'm not going to say anything more about it because I'm not going to spoil the rest of the film because uh, you can go watch it right now on YouTube. 
uh, on a channel called Alter, which I wasn't super familiar with. I've seen a couple shorts that had the Alter tag on them, but I didn't know what their deal was. But supposedly they are a, um, a platform that, that kind of acquires these films after, maybe after their festival runs or during their festival runs and then puts them up on YouTube. I highly, highly, highly suggest that you go check out uh, the, the link down below in the description in that card. Um, go watch it. It's, it's real fun. Uh, and then we'll talk about it. The next film I want to talk about, and these do not go in any kind of order, but I am trying to mix it up, like put different things next to each other, uh, is about as different as you can get from Asking for a Friend. Very quick, not long, no dialogue. I don't think there's not one word spoken in it. Um, it is a film called Asian Girls by a director called Han Lee. I didn't know much about this director. I still really can't, after looking it up, can't find much about this director. She, she made one other film. Uh, called French Girls, which is some kind of companion piece to this. But this this movie charmed the hell out of me. Preparing for this video is watching a lot of uh, short films, some of them on Alter, some of them on other platforms. This was one of the Alter ones. And man, it is creepy and great. It almost has like a like a Nicholas Vining Refn like uh, drone to it. It's just a very simple story about two neighbors, two, two girls, two Asian girls that live next to each other. And they kind of clearly represent different uh, socioeconomic standing, different um, ways of life, and you just kind of cut back and forth between them. Um, and they're each kind of in some ways like haunted by like visions or nightmares of the other one. Really, I mean, this six minute movie is not a whole ton I can tell you about it without spoiling it, but. Um, yeah, I love this one. I, what little I could look up about the director. Uh, she's a fashion photographer, I think. Uh, and I think this movie was made in Australia with like uh, Australian funding. Um, yeah, really, really good. Hope uh, she does a feature or something or expands or does more shorts like this. They're really, it's really messed up. Reminds me of like a, a music video without centering the music kind of in a way. Pivoting from that, pivoting from like stripped down, no dialogue, uh, very short. Uh, to a movie that's incredibly ambitious and has a ton of world building and a really good sense of place. This one's called Suicide by Sunlight. This is by a director named Nikatyu Juzu, and it's a vampire movie about a medical worker. Vampires are kind of known in this, in this world, um, and we hear a little bit about how uh, black vampires are, because of the melanin in their skin, can kind of daywalk uh, more easily, more readily pass in New York society. So that's our character. We kind of pick up and realize that uh, her husband's divorcing her and he's taking the kids and the kids are like her, they're, they're, they're a vampire and she, she, she wants her kids back and it's like it's a weird like Kramer versus Kramer with daywalking vampires. Um, yeah, this is another longer one, another kind of more plot intensive one. I really, really liked it. It tells a complete story, but it feels kind of oblique enough that if this were expanded into a feature, it would, it would, it would make sense and it, wouldn't, it probably wouldn't feel padded because I kind of wanted to see more and I wanted to know more. Uh, this one, there is a version of it on YouTube, but I can't tell if the, the channel is legit or not or if, the, if it's the official one. Uh, I went to the director's uh, YouTube and it seems like the official one is on Vimeo. So I'll put the, uh, I'll put the official way to watch this movie uh, down in the links below. Really, really liked it. Uh, I'm a sucker for also a good New York movie, and it, it really had a, a cool, especially like modern New York, it's, it's hard to do because it's it's so different than kind of the New York of the 80s and 90s and 70s and, and like the filmic New York, but it, it really uh, has a good sense of place and flavor um, and really nice cinematography and production design. It, it's an intriguing movie. Definitely the, the one of the least horror movies on the list because it's, it's more of like, a kind of character study or, 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 or divorce drama more than anything else. Uh, but I really, really liked Suicide by Sunlight. The next two movies on this list, I've kind of saved the most um, ridiculous and, and kind of exploitative and kind of uh, visceral uh, for last, uh, kind of the goofiest. Uh, the next movie is called Budfoot. It is co-directed by the director of Demon's Rook, uh, co-directed uh, by the director and the director of photography of Demon's Rook, uh, James Sizemore and Tim Rice, Reese, Reese? Not like Tim Rice, like the Elton John and Tim Rice, like Tim Rice, like R-E-I-S, uh, Reese, maybe? I don't know, I should have looked up, how do you say it? Uh, but uh, they directed an indie called Demon's Rook. This was a while ago now, this was, this was over 10 years, what year was this? 
yeah, 2013. So I definitely wasn't talking about uh, movies on uh, on YouTube at that point. But I really liked this movie. This was a really kind of indie, indie darling with a, with a ton of special effects and real 80s vibe to it. Real kind of candy color um, creature effects to it. And this short is a lot like that and it has a similar aesthetic, but the aesthetic is dialed way up because it's it's psychedelic. This is a this is a stoner stoner metal uh, movie, and I knew from the first minute of the movie when you hear uh, Electric Wizard on the soundtrack, I was like, I'm gonna like this movie because I I love stoner metal, satanic kind of occultist stoner metal, um, and this this is this movie is that writ large for 20 minutes. It is colorful and psychedelic. It is about a toy maker, a guy that makes kind of vinyl and underground toys, these kind of weirdo, psychedelic, decolo art toys. And he has clearly before had a problem with like smoking too much weed and, um, and taking too many drugs and huffing all these kind of chemicals, these toxins that he uses to make his toys. Um, but he, he swears that isn't the case this time, but he makes this little this little kind of He-Man Master of the Universe meets Bigfoot meets um, cannabis action figure named Budfoot, and this it's it's like a psychedelic stoner um, puppet master movie because it's, it it comes to life and it starts talking to him and it starts telling him about like its occult origins and stuff like that and then it tries to it tries to kill him. It's it is awesome. It is, is, is goofy as hell. It is weird as hell. The special effects are really cool. A good mix of like practical and like stop motion for the, for, for Budfoot himself and, uh, um, all these digital, weird digital effects and, and, and kaleidoscopic drug effects. Uh, I, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, the Budfoot himself is, I, I recognize the voice. He's, he's voiced by Henry Zabrowski from, um, Last podcast on the left, the comedian, uh, is very distinctive voice, um, but really fun, goofy. This is another one from Alter, so they've, they've definitely got different things on their platform, but this is a, a, a real, real crowd pleaser, real goofy one. The last film on this list, uh, it's not on YouTube, it's not on Vimeo, uh, it is on Shudder, so you can only really watch it if you have a Shudder subscription. Which I do recommend. I don't I, like. I'm not gonna say this 20 minute movie. You have to get Shutter just to watch this movie. But they have a lot of really good uh, stuff and fun exclusives. But it's called El Gigante or Gigante. Um, I've talked. I don't know if I've talked about this uh, movie before, but I definitely talked about the book that it's based on because it's based on my friend Shane McKenzie's um, novel Muerte con Carne, um, which is a kind of a, a Mexican fried riff on uh, Texas Chainsaw. Uh, but this is a, this short film is kind of just an adaptation of like, I think just the opening chapter, or maybe like the prologue, uh, but it's a 20 minute uh, short film about this kind of, um, like, like I said, Texas Chainsaw family, but it's the Tex-Mex uh, Chainsaw, uh, directed by uh, co-directors uh, Gigi Saul Guerrero, who has uh, gone on to do like the um, Hulu um, uh, Blumhouse series, she did one of those, done a lot of different things, uh, and Luke Bramley. They were a uh, production outfit, Canadian production outfit called Lucha Gore Productions. Um, and they made this, this is their, their, their kind of big best um, short film. But it's about a, a, a family kind of uh, trying to cross the Mexican-American border. And they get, um, uh, they get caught up with this uh, serial killer family. And the, the, the leather face of the family is, uh, is, a, is a luchador, is a, is a, is a, is a, a kind of huge jacked, uh, Mexican wrestler named El Gigante. A good mix of, of disturbing and kind of candy color and enjoying the gore and enjoying the kind of ridiculousness of this um, of this premise. If you like this, I, I really recommend the book. I don't even know if it's in print anymore. Um, I, I know Dead Eye Press had put it out a while ago. If it's not in print, Shane should get it back in print. But um, yeah, if you like this book, you'll if you like this movie, you'll like that book. Um, well worth checking out. Really, um, I know they were trying to do a, a feature version of this a while ago, and I'm sure it's, um, sure it's in different stages of production because the short is really good, and the short um, really made a splash when it originally came out. Kind of lets you have your cake and eat it too because it is, is a somewhat socially conscious uh, movie, but it, boy, does it uh, have creepy, gory, outrageous characters in it. That's five movies uh, that you can go check out right now. Links in the description as to as with everything I talked about. This week's book recommendation, I don't 
normally uh, recommend books that I just got or that I um, haven't had a chance to fully go through yet, but this is an anthology. This is a, a multi-author uh, multi anthology uh, edited by Ellen Datlow, who, who always puts together kind of the best uh, anthologies, and there's just such a hit parade of, uh, of authors in this book, and I love the premise so much. Uh, this is Final Cuts, New Tales of Hollywood Horror, and other spectacle. Uh, there's an uh, Usman T. Malik story in here. There's a Laird Barron story. There's a John Langan story. Kelly Armstrong, Stephen Graham Jones, Gemma Files. There's, there's a lot of great authors in here. Um, and all they're all originals. They were all written expressly for this collection. So not going to be a repeat in the bunch. I'm very, very, very excited for it. I've been kind of counting down for this. Uh, and I'm particularly excited uh, for the John Langan one, which I think might even be a novella. That's it. If you want to find out more about me or where you can get my books or how you can best support me and buy my books, how you can pre-order Clown of the Cornfield. Uh, it is a book that carries a cover blurb from Clive Barker who says, an author who knows how to make us afraid. That's me. Wow. Uh, this is coming out in a beautiful hardcover in August from Harper Teen. Uh, Pre-orders help me out so much. And if you pre-order it now, you will uh, buy yourself a little gift for August that you don't even remember you're going to get. Uh, it is uh, my slasher, my teen slasher book. If you have young people in your life, get it for them. Uh, if you are 95 and you love uh, slashers and horror, you should get it too because adults can like this just as much as teenagers can like it. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you want to stalk me, however you best want to uh, keep an eye on me. I'm Adam Caesar. Everyone have a great day. See you next week.